Heidi at Hen and Chick Studio, and we are so glad that you are with us this morning for our fourth and final week of the Box Step So Along. Oh my gosh, hundreds of you, literally thousands at this point of you have downloaded the free Box Step pattern. And I'm going to put that link up on the screen again so that in case this is the first time you've ever even heard about it, that you have a chance to download that free pattern. It's called Box Step. It's a free downloadable pattern. Now, if you're watching, um, you're going to notice that it says a dollar. Um, it's because the system doesn't like free things, um, but not to worry. When you actually put that in your cart and take it to our website, and follow through and actually purchase it, it is free. It's a free downloadable pattern. It's designed by Kate Colleran. And uh, four weeks ago, we connected with Kate in doing the first of the four videos, or three weeks ago, I don't know how that work. You're working backwards, I don't know. Anyway, the first week. Um, so everything that we're talking about today with the Box Step So Along can all be found at henandchickstudio.com slash box step and on that page you're going to find the download um, you can actually download right from there and then you're going to find all of the videos so week one was all about fabric selection and Kate Colleran and I had a wonderful conversation I've heard many many of you Talk about the fact that it um, helped you understand not only on the box step project, but on other projects, how to better select your fabrics. I followed up with another video um, during the blizzard um, about a little bit more about that. That's also on that page right below the interview with Kate Colleran. Then we moved on to cutting. Then we moved on to piecing. Lots of great tips in those videos. Again, the videos are free, they're on, they live on that box step page. They apply to any project that you're working on. So if you're needing a little boost or needing, feeling like you maybe need a little more information about cutting or piecing, both of those videos would be awesome for you to be able um, uh, to look at. Another awesome thing that is at the bottom of the website page is your finished quilt tops because that's what this is all about. It's about getting your fabric out and using it and making something fun with it. And this box step pattern, I mean, ladies, tell me about it. It looks so different no matter how people are putting it together because it's all about fabric selection and fabric placement. So if you go back to that hiddenchickstudio.com slash box step, scroll all the way to the bottom, Everybody who has been uploading their finished top is posted down there. And if for some reason you don't see your photo, let me know. We had a couple glitches early on um, with uh, uploading. I think I've got those all worked out because everybody seemed to be coming through okay. But if for some reason you don't see yours, let me know and let's make sure we get it up there. But do you have to have it done by a deadline? Well, if you want to be a part of our prize and our awards, um, you do have to have the top done and uploaded by February 15th. That link is also on that same page. Let's say it again, henandchickstudio.com slash box step. And everything is on there. So you have to have the top pieced. You do not have to have it quilted. But that is something that you, um, if you want to be uh, in for the awards, that's the date that you have to have it done. It can't be cut out and laid on a design wall. Um, it can't be smaller. You can't say, oh, I'm going to make a table runner. It has to be the size of the pattern or larger. Um, like I added an extra border because I just liked the way it looked. That's fine. It just can't be smaller. And my box step is back here um, to the left. And maybe we'll look at that a little bit here um, in a minute. But today um, is all about finishing. And these are not hecklers in the crowd. <laughs> these are not hecklers. These are professional uh, long arm quilters. And good morning. We've got Liz Myman and Stephanie Unruh, and their business is called A Quilted Memory. Yep. Correct. How long have the two of you been quilting? I mean, is there, it, 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 maybe combined years? Oh my gosh, wouldn't that be amazing? Yeah. Long arm quilting or quilting? Well, both. <laughs> both. I started quilting in 1980. Okay, very my good. My 
father-in-law could not believe that I was going to take all this nice fabric and cut it into little pieces. And sew it <laughs> We're crazy together. that way. We're crazy that way. Yeah. Um, how long have you? I started with you in 15, so going Super. on nine years. Nine years. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. And you, um, the two of you are what I refer to as professional long armors. So um, you have a long arm quilting machine. It happens to be, um, yes, you happen to have two. You happen to have a machine like, um, uh, I'll say from the same brand that same we brand. do, mm -hmm. APQS. Um, and you have, have two machines. And do both of them have computers yes. for you? And so you're computerized, um, be able to do that. And your job is to help people Take, bring you. They bring you your tops, and you quilt them together. They bring us the quilt tops, and we do our best to enhance it as best we can, and to make the quilter look really good. <laughs> oh, I love that! I love that. Well, we're going to talk a little bit about some of the things that um, that uh, might be a part of how to finish your top. Again, you do not have to have your top finished for the box step so long. But at some point, you do want to finish that because well, an unfinished quilt top is just sitting on a shelf. It can't be given away. And, um, you know, I actually, we were talking with a customer the other day. And uh, for Christmas, she gave away, was it 22? I think you were sitting here. Were you sitting here? No. No, uh, 22 um, some that was, <laughs> the days go, they blend together. Who was, I'm not sure who was working. Um, and, uh, but she had given 22, she let her family pick quilts and there were 22 wow. of them. And what a, what a blessing that that was for her to give, watch her children and grandchildren pick out a quilt and, um, she took pictures of them so she could enjoy it, uh, even when they're not, but you know, it's, it's one of those things. I think all of us, I think it's one of the reasons why we do make quilts is to be able to finish them and then give them away. And I should say, in case you recognize Stephanie, she is our Tuesday gal here at Hen and Chick Studio and has been for a number of years. Five. Yeah, she she tried to quit once when she moved and we didn't allow that. So we figured out how to make it work um, even when she lives farther away from Hen and Chick Studio. And we're so glad um, that she's able to come uh, once a week. And so if you, most Tuesdays, every once in a while there's a different day, um, but most Tuesdays you'll find Stephanie here at Head and Chick Studio. So um, always know that she's a great resource for um, finishing quilts. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about uh, finishing quilts. Um, when you have a top, okay, I'm going to pull mine off, and you can be you can critique mine if you need to. It's lovely. <laughs> okay, so this is my box step sew along. Okay, there's a photo of it on the website. So when somebody brings you a top. Are there tips, I'm going to fold it this way so we can get it a little bit. Are there tips that you would tell me um, if I'm going to bring it to you? About threads, about... Please iron the quilt as you're piecing it. Okay. I can't emphasize that enough. Because if you wait until you're done, you might have sewn one seam this direction and the other seam that direction, and you will always have a lump. And we can't get rid of that lump for you. Okay, we but do a lot of and things, but we can't, can't do, do that. that. <laughs> yeah. So back to our our piecing um, video, I talked a, a little bit about pressing, and and you are right that there are some people who think that like they'll just skip that pressing spot. Oh, that we get those kind of quilts, yes, all the time. Mm -hmm. And it is imperative that each step in the process is done correctly, mm -hmm. so that you um, that you end up with a very flat quilt. Mm -hmm. Okay. What other kinds of tips? might you give me? Like, uh, what about threads? Cutting threads, making sure that, that it's clean like clipping, this? Clipping threads, you know, you're not gonna get them all off. And we have one of those little lint, the lint sticky brush. lint brush that we'll take and do that. If you have an embroidered quilt top, please, hand embroidered, please turn it over and those really long thread tails, if you clip those off, you won't have a dark brown showing through the light. On they the would top. shadow. Those mm -hmm. threads can shadow through certain. Definitely. Uh, absolutely. What about? I, I have people um, come in and we talk about this. What about stay stitching? I'm going to say my edge. My edge. Like right now, my edge is raw. Um, there's nothing on here. Some people talk about that you should do like an eighth of an inch uh, stitching all the way around the quilt. We yes. Get, no. We, we get some like that. The problem can be if you're stay stitching. To be sure not to stretch it 
because you can create a problem that you didn't have. Oh. The weight of the quilt hanging off your sewing machine as you're stitching along, especially if there's a bias triangle or something along the edge, mm -hmm. you could actually make it worse rather than better. So we're fine if you don't. Yeah. And I, and I, it is interesting what, I mean, I hadn't even thought There's about differences that. differences of opinion, for sure. Oh, my gosh. And, you know, we could have 10 more professional long armors mm -hmm. come in, and everybody would have their different. But I think um, if there's anything I could encourage you today to think about um, as we're talking is how do you communicate with a professional long armor? Um, is your favorite phrase, uh, just, just do whatever you'd like? <laughs> I mean... We don't mind quilt that. Don't mind that. No, quilt yeah. is desired. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we don't mind but that. But if you have a specific design or a specific idea for how you want the quilt if to look in the image. image. Yeah, like if you've been sewing it together and this is supposed to be a mountain scene or whatever and you want there to be, like we want to know that too. Like we, we want to know if you have a specific Right, like if you Goal think it, if you it. think because you picked the colors, I'm gonna just say make it up. The blues yeah. and greens that to you it feels like ocean waves. Yeah. Then to you that matters because you can start to see their inspiration. Yeah. And potentially mm -hmm. pick a motif that might look like an ocean wave. Yeah. And that would that would work. We have some customers that go as far as looking on the internet, finding some patterns, and saying, you know, even if you don't have this exact pattern, if you have something that has this feel. That's what I would prefer, and we mm -hmm. love to hear that. Mm -hmm. When you see a quilt like this, uh, does anything jump in your mind? Like for me, I think about the fact that there's a lot of seams, and so that like I wonder if you're going to have a hard time with all of these seams, or does that not that with our machines? That's yeah, because they're industrial machines. Hockey, yep. hockey um, patches are an issue, but <laughs> short of that, or or um, buttons on the Yep. Shirts, yeah, those are a problem, but something like this, no. However, you want to be sure that you actually sewed all those seams. Sometimes mm -hmm. the okay. fabric travels and you have an opening. If the foot of my machine, if we somehow don't catch it, the foot of the machine gets in there, mm -hmm. it's going to keep going and we're right. going to have a big mess on our hands. Yeah, so what she's talking about, if that wasn't clear, is that when you construct your block, if you did not get a good quarter of an inch seam allowance and for some reason you have two seams that are not if connected. You can stick your finger through. Right, right. That there's a hole. It needs to be fixed before you get to the long arm. And I and we see that happen yeah, too. And and we fix what we see. Yes. And what's possible to fix. But if but you we didn't don't always see, see it in time or Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's I'm sure there's things like that. Um you know, any other immediate thoughts about my top that you'd be like wanting to make sure you told me? No, if we were looking for a pattern, we'd look for something with a little bit of motion, mm -hmm. some circular or soft edges because you have all those hard angles. Yeah. But yeah. it also feels like with that particular pattern, like you got kind of like the, the pinwheel, is, the it, swirl in there. So we might want to sort of mimic that with a quilting pattern to... And I would agree with that. I would agree that with that out. too. Mm -hmm. And um, if I, uh, so we obviously have a long arm quilting machine here at Hen and Chick Studio. We are not professional long armers. That is not our job. Our job, and I love our job, is to help the people who want to try to quilt their own projects. Mm -hmm. And to, I mean, that's a whole different customer than somebody who would like to, you know, have to quilt by a paycheck or by a, with a check. Um, but uh, I think about, how can I help uh, a renter if they're going to come in and you know quilt this and keep it simple? And one of the ideas I had immediately was just a simple waving line, mm -hmm. so that I, I'm going to say almost purposely, don't have to hit all of those seams um, and and do just a simple wave. Mm -hmm. And I'm amazed sometimes at how uh, something simple can really accentuate the design. Yes. Yes. It doesn't have to be busy. Um, and, and I, maybe we'll, you know, I don't know if I can, I don't think I can. I think the camera's in a spot where I can't at the moment, but, um, we have a quilt over here where it, it's the Jason Yenter prism quilt. It's busy. Yeah. There's yeah. a lot going on in it. And I don't know, maybe, maybe I can hold on. Let's see. Let's see if I can. I'm going to just try real quick. No, I can't. The camera's not, the, not at that angle. Sorry. Can't change it. People. Uh, there's just some things we just can't do. But if you have a lot of really busy fabrics, 
no matter what we put on it, no matter what thread color, you're just not going to see the quilting. So with that quilt on the wall that is kind of busy, the waves really make sense because you don't want to see the intricacies of a quilt pattern. You just want to get the yep. feeling. Yes, that's a very good. What about thread color? You kind of just said something about that. Um, I think this is this is something that when we teach long arm quilting, um, that people are, um, here's how I teach it. The needle of a long arm is bigger than the needle on your domestic machine. So even if the tension on our long arm is good, that, that needle um, creates a hole. Mm -hmm. So to avoid a black dot, like if you had white thread on the top and black on the bottom, um, to avoid a little black dot, it's just easier if the color of thread on the bottom uh, matches or mm -hmm. is similar mm -hmm. in shade and color to the thread that's on the top. Yeah. Would you would you agree with yes, that? Yes, and Absolutely. especially if you're doing some sort of a pattern that changes direction, because every time you get to a point to change direction, that's a big risk for having thread pulled up. Yes, I would I would agree with that. And um, the other thing is, um, when we talk about thread color, uh, again, there's different different schools of thought. Different schools of thought. Thank you. So I like the thread to blend in. Mm -hmm. The next person might say, "Oh, I want the thread to show," and so that's also something that you have to consider. And I tell this story all the time: is that I I always have told my the long armors go ahead and uh, I want the threads to blend, right? So a quilt came back beautifully done. Just the top was stunning, stunning, stunning. And I was not prepared, hadn't thought about this, hadn't thought about this many years ago, flipped the quilt over and it was like a rainbow. It was uh, because every time they switched color on the top, they switched the color in the bobbin so that the bobbin and the top thread were matching and the fabric I chose for the back showed it all, mm -hmm. absolutely showed it all. Now somebody might go, again, different schools of thought, mm -hmm. somebody might go, oh, the back is beautiful, mm -hmm. I love the rainbow. I, on the other hand, was like, oh, oh I wasn't, I guess <laughs> I don't like that. that, I don't like that. It wasn't that it was done wrong, it's just that it's, it becomes a preference of what we like. So we also talk a lot about backing fabric. And do you quilt with anything on the back? Cotton, flannel, cuddle? Not sheets. Not we, sheets? We try to avoid sheets. We have some customers that we can't quite dissuade. But, but uh, yeah. And, and sheets are not recommended because, I'm, I'm going to say this because I think this is the right answer, because the weave of them is so tight that when that needle pierces through, you, it's just, there's a hole there. Is that one reason? Yeah, and if you buy the inexpensive sheets because you're trying to save money, you kind of get what you pay for. And if you would buy an expensive sheet, well, why wouldn't you come to the quilt shop and buy some pretty fabric that looks nicer? Correct, correct. But there are people, and, and again, everybody has to do their own thing. We know that, right? That everybody has to do their own thing. There are some people who like a solid on the back no matter what's on the top mm -hmm. and we'll take like a, a white solid um but i and again i can't change but if you ever come in the store we can show you all of these quilts but um i have another quilt that the girls did it's a charisma horton pattern and it's again i'm looking at it right now oh, um it is re it's uh rainbow colors again and i said to them i said um i wanted a custom quilted quilt because it screams custom quilting and i wanted the um, them to have the freedom to show off their skills however that looked to them. So I was like, okay, Heidi, if they pick the rainbow colors that are on the front of the quilt. So I picked a really busy, very colorful backing so that whatever you so did. So chose. Yeah, but what's funny is you chose to quilt it in all black. And so I could have chosen a solid black on the back and, and, it, and it would have been black thread. But I love, I love it the way it is. So, you know, certainly, but it's kind of funny how, um, again, you have to, the more, that's right. And, and I was perfectly fine with that. Um, I feel like my, my hair, it's my right off. you know, why, why do we put these things in? All right. So obviously my hair just doesn't want to stay that way. Okay. So a backing fabric while we're talking about that, how many inches extra do you need? 
around it, all sides. Four to six on all sides. So eight to 12 wider Total. and longer. We can work with narrower, but we have to clamp from the sides mm -hmm. and pin to zippers on the top and so we, and bottom. So we need to have room because if the machine hits a clamp, it'll distort the design. It'll probably hurt the machine. It'll probably hurt the clamp. It just could break a needle, much. which will punch a hole in your quilt. Correct. Yeah. And we do not cut straight. I don't care. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I mean, like I always say to when we're talking about long arm rental is that no matter how straight we get, when we get on a machine and it's pulling it taut, mm -hmm. all of a sudden everything that was, you know what I mean? You don't have the control that you no, think you're going to have. No. And so you've got to have a little extra. Um, and you, you just don't want to be cutting it that, you just don't want to be cutting it that no. close. When you try and save money by making a back too small or yeah. doing whatever, we've gotten to the Morning, bottom. Morning, Kyle. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> we've gotten to the bottom of a quilt and had to take it off and add to the backing fabric. Well, with what we charge, you'd have just have been ahead to buy another six inches or eight inches of fabric. Right. Right. And that's, I mean, I, th I think there's just so many things is that sometimes trying to get ahead doesn't get you ahead. It just, it no. causes more problems. Yeah. And so that certainly is. Um, and don't cut the salvages off, please. <laughs> yes. On, and that's, uh, yeah. So there's, okay. So when you're, when you're piecing a back, and again, this is something we teach in the long arm rental class. And I'm amazed by people that, you know, didn't know that is that when you're piecing a back, you don't want salvages in the middle on of the your seam. quilt. In the middle of your quilt. Mm -hmm. That's where you take them off. But on the top edge, the bottom edge, leave that. And it's always easier, like if your quilt, if your quilt is like 20 inches shorter than the than the um than the backing, don't cut that 20 inches off on the back because it's easier to have you'll the salvage. Yeah. Right. You'll get it back and it's easier to have the salvage. Mm -hmm. Um, to work with because we pin, you pin that or however the you salvage is that. straight people don't tend to cut them off straight correct yeah. correct so always important to remember that um, uh, cuddle let's talk about cuddle we think it's easy to quilt um, it soaks in the, the thread in a way like you don't mm -hmm. you see the the texture of that um, any anything about cuddle or anything like that that you have a recommendation about or make sure the piece is big enough because you can't piece the cuddle yeah can't piece the cuddle and you can't stretch it no no and you need to be sure wherever you buy it now if you buy it here you're going to be fine they're going to cut it off straight if you go to some other, other places, places sometimes it comes crooked we have to straighten it and then we're not sure that the piece mm -hmm. is going to be big enough anymore yeah yeah, always at that point, better to have a little extra than than not enough. It's always yeah. better to have yeah. a little extra. Because you can make things. We, we always talk about scrap that. You quilts. can, it was scrap <laughs> quilts, and if, if it's like cuddle, you can make a scarf. You can make a little texture blanket. Mm -hmm. I, the retreaters that are here this week, that's what they're doing with some scraps from cuddle. And um, I think that's awesome. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. There's just lots of um, opportunity uh, for that. Okay, so um, let's talk a little bit about design because, my gosh, we, I think we could probably talk for hours, right. but we don't want to. And I, I'm going to double check, but it looks like we've got people watching from all over the place. And I think we even have some fans in the neighborhood. Um, Kathy is saying that she loves oh, your work, Kathy. so that is, that is <laughs> awesome. Okay, so when we talk about the motifs, um, okay, I, I put quilting into three categories. Meandering which is to me the very simplest. Mm -hmm. And um, and then I have, I'll say edge to edge mm -hmm. or panto motifs, right. kind all of over. Are the, all over, the kind of three words there, and then custom. Mm -hmm. Now, in any of those, density becomes an issue. Yes. Okay, so um, you charge, like uh, some people charge by the square inch and then the square inch price changes based on the type or style of quilting you charge by the hour yes. and it's just simply like so if it's a looser pattern a larger motif it's going to take less time than a dense a dense pattern correct yes you get what you pay for a lot of times the less expensive is subsidizing the custom work i feel like if you pay me money you should get what you pay for right and um, every, you know, everything is different. We could, again, we could have lots of discussions about this. I, there are some quilts that do not 
like people think they're, they should custom quilt it. And actually, I'm going to say one right behind yeah. you. This is a quilt that we talk about, and I don't know if we can quite see it, but you can't see the quilting. No. If I had told you to custom quilt that, if that money was lost, maybe I'd see it if it was really specific in this border. But at that point, it's not worth it because you're just seeing the texture. The fabric is busy enough compared to the quilt um, that I was referring to that solids that the girls made. It, you see everything. You absolutely see and, everything. And we would advise the customer that maybe custom quilting isn't a great choice for that, for that reason, that they're not going to get what they're paying for. Yeah, that's good. Um, meandering. Um, it, uh, for some people to understand what meandering is, some people would describe it as a puzzle piece. Just a, an all-over pattern, mm -hmm. nothing, nothing fancy. And I think that what has happened in my lifetime of watching long arming change are the literally thousands, thousands At least. of thousands, millions probably, of edge-to-edge -edge or all-over motifs that can enhance your quilt. Mm -hmm. So, like, I'm going to show you, because I have a few quilts here, and these are all done um, by uh, Stephanie and her mom. And so uh, they are, this is a little, just a little table runner. It's got a heart theme. Um, so here's an example of, I'm going to say you use black thread on the top. So there's black thread on the bottom. And the, so you can really see the motif on the um, fabric. It's okay. It's, this is <laughs> it was see, spam. It, it, of course, and of course, yeah, we have the UPS man come in. It happens all the time, right? So great to be able. Like here's an example of um, you. You didn't put white thread on the back or a cream thread on the back for the hearts. It yeah. literally is. They're black on the front. They're black on the back. But I think it's interesting that you can see the heart motifs so much better on the back uh -huh. in this particular case so than you can on the front. On the front. And so it's a fairly dense pattern. I would call that, I mean, I'll show you on the back. Um, it's not little, but at the same time, it's not a big Yeah, span. no, it's not a big. Yeah. That's the nice thing with the computer, too, is that we have the ability to resize that. So just because, you know, we could make the hearts bigger if it's a bigger quilt. But she could have had six-inch hearts back there. Yeah, but for Correct. something that small, you wouldn't. Yeah, yeah. and the so biggest silly. space, we always say that the biggest space that you should leave empty is your fist. Because otherwise, your batting is going to shift. Mm -hmm. You're going to have other issues. And so um, you really don't want to go bigger than that. Right. Okay, so in this particular, mo um, this table runner, um, again, you picked, um, it's hearts. You picked a really, how should we call it? What is it? Frilly. A frilly? <laughs> yes, I would call it a frilly motif. And um, I'm going to turn it around. Again, you picked cream thread on the front cream thread on the back. So again, some of the blocks, like on the purple, you see the motif, but I would say on the back, it is strictly texture. And I, I like that, that look where it's, it's texture. And this, I love this, that you can literally change. So this is the water can tankini, and now it made sense, you put flowers. So you've got a flower motif, I'm gonna turn it around, that you can see. I think it's so pretty. Little, these are all patterns. And then this one, it's an Easter quilt, right? So what do you think they found? They found an Easter egg pattern. And that's how, I'm gonna see if I can find one where you can. I don't know if you can see it on any of Well, here, yeah, this one, here. There, I, right by my finger, right here. Let me see if I can get that up close. This is um, the Easter egg right here. And so I'm sure there's some motif you couldn't do. I mean, I'm sure, but, yeah. but I've, seen, I've seen cowboys. There's everything under the sun. Mm -hmm. Right. And so you can do just simple shapes, but you can, you know, really do it. Now, like here at Hen and Chick Studio, we don't have a computer. So we can't, we all we can do is pantos, mm -hmm. which you can that's all by it's all uh driven with hand, a, guided. hand guided thank you um with a laser light so therefore um we could find this motif 
and a customer could probably try to trace it, but it's mm -hmm. going to be much more difficult mm -hmm. because th th that's an intricate little Easter egg kind of thing. But there would be some things that you could do. And then um, another one that I brought uh, out here, this is Marla's Day Flower. And again, one of those patterns that has a ton of piecing. We like to show a variety of styles of quilting. So you chose a larger uh, loop and meander, loop and swirl. What do you call that? Mm -hmm. loop, you know, loop, loop, loop and meander. Yeah. Loop and meander. And it's a bigger motif. It's not, um, it's, I'll say, less dense. Mm -hmm. And so um, it gives the opportunity to have a little bit of space um, in the quilting. But I, I, I think to me, it just makes the pattern stand out, mm -hmm. uh, not so much the, the quilting. So, oh my gosh, we are, there's so many different aspects of how you can finish a quilt. Now, you also are amazing at binding. And so that is also something that you guys offer as a service, correct? We do. <laughs> and, and it is, um, are, there, are there any tricks to people? You chuckle, is it because, is it because you do it a lot? Or we do is it, it more than we enjoy doing it. You enjoy it. <laughs> But we love it when you do it. Yeah. Um, and so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show this. So you machine stitch the binding on both sides. So I'm going to say a traditional method of putting binding on would be that you add the binding to the front of the quilt, so the, to the quilt top, and then you add that by machine. Then you pull it around to the back, and then you would hand stitch that side down on the back side. That is a very traditional method that has been done for And we're happy to sew it one way to half bind the quilt. Oh, so, so we have some ladies that enjoy sitting and watching TV and stitching, but don't really enjoy the other aspect. Because if you're doing a big quilt, it can get to be cumbersome. Oh, yes. Yeah. And it, it's still cumbersome for you, but it's, but it, it, yeah. Some of the ladies are a little older. Yes, sometimes, it, yes, I you would agree with that. Facilities? Which you have the facilities, or... <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> and, okay, so, but when you machine, when you add your quilting, your binding by machine, you are starting on the back side. Yes. And when you do that, so you've trimmed the top mm -hmm. completely, right? I'm going to get this up close here so you guys can see it. So you've trimmed the top completely. Mm -hmm. You add it to the back, and yes. now you pull it to the front. But when you pull it to the front, you are stitching from you the are, front side. You are covering all the stitches that you would see from stitching it to the back. You make sure you pull it past that. And if you could feel this, you could see that where I'm feeling it here is Your more, goal. more this way than, than here. So you will have a little bit of... So like your stitching might be just inside of the binding, you might see a little bit of it. We want to get it in the ditch or onto the quilt back. We prefer not to have it on the actual binding, binding. back if we can help it. Yeah, and wouldn't you say one key element here is matching the color of thread? Yes. And so that you've, you know, and again, not everybody has a whole... Every color under the rainbow. Right, yes. so then that's a whole different method. Um, but it takes work. Now, I've heard people say that they glue their binding down. Do you do anything like that to hold it in place? Do you use wonder <laughs> clips? Do you pin pins. it? Pins. All right. So, you, you know, I mean. Well, you do a lot of pinning. Yeah. 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 And hold it in place as you go. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And I think that's something, too, is that uh, maybe sometimes by the time we get to that part of the quilt, we're ready to be done. And so binding is just yet a whole nother part of the process that if you want it done well, You've got to kind of follow the steps that you're mm -hmm. supposed to yeah. that you're supposed to follow. You'll be glad you did in the end. It's just painful yes. at the time. Yes, and I do see Minerva. Minerva likes to bind, so oh. she's she's a binding fan here. So that is awesome. <laughs> Minerva Minerva makes a lot of quilts. We'll get her number. She, yeah, you'll get her number. They'll be calling you Minerva um, to to help them. Uh, okay, so um, binding. Okay. Is there anything about the quilting process that we haven't touched on? Now I'm trying to think if there's anything that I haven't haven't touched on or anything that you want to share that I haven't that I haven't asked no, you about but when you make your binding if you're going to make it and have someone else apply it be sure that you use the um, 
diagonal seams. Diagonal seams. So, so this is this is us, and I, my, my poor little wad has gotten, but like this is my binding all ready to go. So what she's talking about is that I am using a diagonal seam to put my strips together. Otherwise, you're going to have a big lump everywhere there's a join. Yeah, I do need to trim a couple points there. Though. And that's hard to sew over also. It's hard to just get all that through the machine because you got lumps on both sides. Yeah. Do you use like a walking foot when you put nope. your binding on? I mean, like some people really, would. We, you can, absolutely. Yeah, I was going to say. Help. You could. I just you, you're, don't you've change got, the foot. You've got it. <laughs> I didn't have that possibility till about. Sure. <laughs> yeah, so you've got, you just have learned, you, and I think so often don't we teach ourselves the way, and it's just, e we're used to that, so we're, it's easy to do that, mm -hmm. it's easy. Yeah. I'm sewing for 60 years. <laughs> yeah, oh, absolutely, so that's, it, it's just one of those things, there's so many different things. Now, um, you know, we encourage you to get your quilt tops done, whatever that looks like, whether you're trying to put them on your domestic machine, and of course, if you don't know when I say domestic machine, I'm talking about the machine you sew on at home. Um, kind of thing versus a long arm is, is an industrial machine. Um, so you have options. You can quilt them yourself. You can learn, take our long arm certification class and rent and do them yourself if that's something that's important to you. Or you can find a professional quilter like a quilted memory, Liz and Stephanie, um, that can do your work. Now, um, I want to be clear just so that you understand, we do not take in quilts here for specifically for them. Um, but if Stephanie is working, you can come and see her. And so we always say, you have to call Liz first. Liz is the, you're the front man, yeah, front woman. You're the front woman. And so if you need a phone number, um, it is on our website, but you're always welcome to call us and we're glad to give it to you. Um, and then you make the arrangements with them. If that means that you meet Stephanie here at the store, we're perfectly fine with that. Um, but we do not um, have a big enough space to hold quilts. And um, again, I'm going to go back to that communication. Yeah, I so, want to talk to somebody face to face. I want to see your quilt so we can talk about what it looks like and what you might want to have done with it. And it's just, it's not the same over the phone if you drop it off, if whatever. And yeah. I can't guarantee that something won't accidentally happen to it if it doesn't come straight to my hands. Yeah, that's right. That's so, right. And, and we don't want anything to happen. We don't need the liability. Right. We don't want, and we don't want anything to happen. And we don't want to miscommunicate mm -hmm. um, any um, uh, kinds of information. So absolutely. we absolutely encourage um, our customers to call them directly. And again, um, if that means that you end up meeting here when Stephanie is working, we're perfectly fine with that, um, whether to pick it up or drop it off. It's just that, uh, again, we just don't um, accept them um, here uh, kind of thing. So, uh, well, it has been. This has been great, ladies. Great. Yeah, I, thank you. I, I appreciate it. And I know, I mean, there's there's more things that you guys do um, than just, I'll say, um, I'll say finishing people's quilts. You have other services that you offer, correct? I mean, like, uh, I know you've actually made quilts for people. We had a gentleman recently mm -hmm. um, that came in and um, wanted a very specific quilt. And you handled that um, from start to finish for we him. Make t shirt quilts. You make That's t shirt one quilts. one of our specialties. And our pattern yeah. is a little different than people are used to. And so it's kind of fun because it's a collage style. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. um, but we do a lot of those, you know, especially in the next few months, we'll be doing a lot graduation. of graduation. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And um, we're doing a t shirt class. Um, and when I say a t shirt class, I call it a lecture to understand what it is you need to do. Because I think that there's um, t-shirt quilts are not a simple no. process. There's a lot of math involved and a lot of planning. And um, in, in some ways, I think it's actually more difficult than a regular quilt. Well, this um, you have all that stretch from the t-shirts that you got to figure out how to deal with. Yeah. And so, again, um, you know, if you're looking for a professional uh, to finish, you know, to help you with those t-shirt quilts, these are your gals to, to be able to help you do that. If you're wanting to do it yourself, I've got a class coming up February 13th um, where you can, it's basically a lecture and we're gonna go through that process so you have an understanding of what goes into the planning so that you then could make it, but maybe you end up having them quilt it. Um, and so there's a lot of that too, where mm -hmm. you take somebody's quilt. Oh, we get a lot of t-shirts. Shirt yes, absolutely. All right, well, we are going to end on that note because I, again, we could, we could continue to go on, but. If you are participating in the Box Step Sew Along, this is the end of the, the four videos that we're doing. We, of course, are looking forward to seeing even more tops um, put together by February 15th. 
So again, if you're just listening to this and you're like, I didn't know about the box step so long, join in the fun. It's not too late. It's a doable project that you can still have done by February 15th. I don't know that you could do it in a day. That'd be a pretty intense day. You <laughs> There's could do a, it in a weekend. <laughs> but a weekend is doable because uh, I saw Goldie get hers done in a weekend. I took two weekends to do it because I was enjoying it <laughs> and, not, and not rushing. But um, anyway, we would love to have you still participate in the Box Step So Along. And if you have any questions about this or anything else that's going on at Hen and Chicks, we hope you will contact us. And until the next time we see you, be creative.